Serato have added a lot of exciting new performance features into their DJ software in the two decades since Scratch Live first appeared. But you know what hasn't really changed much at all? The library. And let's be honest, in the intervening years, other competitors have really raised the bar in terms of library management. And for a while now, it has felt like Serato were really falling behind. So today, I am very glad to be giving you a first look at the new version, 4.0.0 which is just about to go into public beta and which gives the Serato DJ Pro and Lite libraries a whole new foundation. Right, so we are now looking at Serato DJ Pro version 4.0.0. This is an early beta. It's prior to the one that you'll be testing in the public beta. So there might be stuff in here that's not quite as good as it will be in the version that you're looking at, but this will give you a general idea. I'm gonna run through the features in the order that Serato have given them to me in the release notes, they're certainly not, I don't think, in order of like importance. And it's a slightly odd order because a lot of them revolve around this new right-click functionality, which doesn't appear until halfway down the list of new features. But nonetheless, we'll go through in order. First of all, and this is a feature that I didn't really know I wanted, but actually I'm kind of in love with it now, right? We have favorite crates. You know, when I play at, say, an 80s night, for example, I will usually drag all of my 80s crates up through this list of playlists or crates up to the top so they're easily accessible for that gig. And then after the gig, I will drag them all back. And that is a fiddly process. It's time consuming. Now, I don't have to do that anymore because all I have to do is go onto the crate that I want, right click it and favorite crate. Then it appears at the top of the list, the very top with a little star next to it. That is your favorite crate. And I can go in. And you'll see it's still in place there, down where it was before. It hasn't moved. So it's just creating a shortcut to that crate. And that means that, yeah, before my 80s night, put all my 80s crates into the favorites. And then afterwards, I just go in and right click and remove from favorites. And they were just there. They, they've gone back to, I mean, they were always in their same place. But yeah, absolutely loving that feature. A really cool feature. Something which people have been clamoring for for the longest time, and I know this is going to get people very excited, and that is the ability to search your crates. So if you have tons and tons, you know, dozens or hundreds of crates, and you can't locate a particular crate that you want to find, you know, you have to previously have to hunt around for it. Now, you just click on this search box on the left, and we type in what we want to search. So I'm going to search for vibes, and now it will bring up not only my local festival vibes playlist but also my streaming ones there from beat source too so anything with vibes in the name it's going to appear there once i'm done click out of it we're back to where we were love that and i know that will just make a lot of people very very happy indeed another thing is crate sorting like right now i have my custom crate layout and we can go in instead let's close up the beat source there we can go in and choose alphabetical and we can do that you know a to z or z to a or we can also sort via date created as well and again we can change the sort order of that so yeah just a handy feature you know there are times when you might again if you're trying to locate a track or you're trying to remember where something is you might just want to switch it out to alphabetical temporarily and then go back to your custom view whatever it's a nice feature glad it's there crate color you can already kind of see in action here we've got different color crates now so i can right click and select crate color change that one to red let's do that we've got red so let's say you've got explicit stuff in red crates and clean stuff in green crates for example you can color code it however you want that's fantastic a really nice feature i wouldn't mind if the colors were a bit bolder to be honest they are slightly muted colors throughout but nonetheless you know there you go you've got crate colors now show in crates this is a feature which oh my word people again have been wanting for a long time just from an organizational point of view, it is an awesome addition. We have, we can right click, show in crates. There we go. And this one just appears in that crate, but let's find this one, uh, show in crates. There you go. So that appears in these different crates here. And I can see where it is. So if I'm trying to think, okay, well that was in a crate with these particular tracks that worked really well. How do I find that? Well, yeah, just right click on the track. Showing crates, you can see which crates it lives in. Excellent stuff. Track ratings. Now we have ratings with custom emojis. So I can rate the track. Let's make that one five stars. Let's make that one, let's do that one four. 
that one four and that one five. And then we can actually go in again, right click. It's all about this right click menu, which just wasn't there in Serato before. Select rating emoji. I can choose, there you go, that one will make hands and we'll make that one, um, let's see, make that one little hearts. And that one will make uh, rating emoji. We'll make that one hands as well. And just to point out as well, so this is like a, gives you almost a secondary sorting kind of way of working because not only will it sort then you'll notice look we've got the five star but then it's got the different emoji five stars so you could build yourself quite a quite an advanced rating system using different emojis to do it i mean i know they look you know kind of like a little fun cheesy thing but actually i feel like for the data wranglers amongst you you could actually end up using this in a pretty powerful and advanced way I'm not really a ratings guy. It's not something I've generally used in the past anywhere else. But yeah, nice to see you can do that. And as I say, potentially pretty powerful. This for me is like the biggest change of all and the most important one of all really. And that is the fact that as you'll note, we have a load of local tracks in this crate. We also have a track from BeatSource. And that is huge because that is something you could not do in Serato before. You could not mix streaming and local files in the same crate so uh, unbelievable just so so good let's go in and just uh let's pull another track in there as well uh what we don't have is any kind of add to regular crates like i would like to be able to do as you can in other software add to and then scroll through my list of crates you can't do that but let's throw that one in there uh there we go so now we have two beat source tracks and we sort by BPM, they see they're just, they're sorted by BPM. They're just treated like local files within the software. So yeah, fantastic to have that option to put your streaming tracks, whatever streaming platform you use, you can now mix up your streaming tracks with your local files. So that's fantastic. Crate info. This is a cool addition with one limitation. You can see if we go to the bottom left, unfortunately, I keep getting this yellow pop up. The beat grid has been locked. I'm sure that will go away as the betas progress but there we go right we can see in the bottom we have how many tracks are in this crate how many minutes they will take to play if you didn't mix them and the size of the crate and whether there's any unanalyzed tracks in that crate as well so that's a big deal you know if you want to put together a set of like an hour and let's say you want to say oh, i'm going to make it an hour and 15 so that will work out to be an hour once i've mixed it etc you can absolutely do that if you're just building out like a dinner playlist or something you want to do a two hour dinner playlist where it doesn't mix then yeah it's really useful information the more inf more information you can get the better and that's a useful thing to have absolutely i'm very pleased about that one thing which doesn't appear in the release notes as far as i can see is the fact that the prepare window and i'm there's a reason i want to talk about this now the prepare window is no longer a horizontal block across the top of the screen. It is now a vertical split. So you can resize it, of course, and move it around. I have to be honest, not a massive fan of this. I preferred the horizontal thing. I've been using Algorithms DJ a fair bit. And one of the things I prefer about Serato was the horizontal layout for the prepare window but now we have a vertical split instead. I just like having all the track information available to me. You know, when it's split like this, I can't see the BPM and the key and everything else. It's gone and it's gone from this main section too. But the reason I'm showing you this now is because the prepare window does not have the information about that prepare crate. So you can't see how many tracks are, you know, if I've got four tracks in there, I can't see how long it's going to take me to play those at the end of the night. Unlike on other platforms, you can do that. So I'd love to see the crate information appearing for the prepare crate as well. But you'll see, yeah, look, the history now. It's all in this vertical split, which you can adjust the size of and the files window too. It's all there. So there's your prepare window. Another change which I hope they revert is the fact that in the prepare crate, you used to be able to just hit the delete key and take a track out of it. Now it won't let me do that. I have to command delete. So it's just an extra step. You know, I, I want to command delete to remove a track from here, of course, from the main crates. But prepare crate, I kind of liked just being able to just hit delete and take it out because it's just a temporary crate anyway. But no biggie. As I say, they might change that and revert that behavior back later on. Now we get to the right click menu. That's the next thing on the list. And there is a lot in there, right? So 
yeah, we can, from the right click menu, you can add it to the prepare crate or your stems crate for analysis of your stems. You can analyze the file and this kind of ties in with the latest stuff we're going to talk about. You can analyze files with the right click. You can change the BPM, you can halve or double, which you could do before, but I think that was only possible with a keyboard shortcut prior to this. Now you have the option to do it just there in the right click menu. Select rating emoji we've already looked at, select track color. Again, that was something you had to just kind of click on the side and do, but now you can change it right there from the right click menu. And we still don't have the ability to kind of color the entire track mark across. You've just got this little colored box in the corner, but yep, yeah, there we go. Select track color, do it right from there, which is cool. Also in here, we then got the show in crates, which we've already looked at. We can disable or enable the beat grid lock, which previously was command click over on the actual lock itself. Now we can do it from the right click. Rescan the file information, which is great to just rescan the tags of a particular track rather than doing the whole library. It's much easier than navigating to the files page that you had to do before. And we can relocate as well. And that's the relocation has had a big upgrade here in Serato DJ Pro. That's like last on the list, but it's pretty cool. Uh, the fact you can now you can search your whole computer or you can choose a location and search for it there. So that's great. Really like having that ability to do that. Uh, show in Finder, which you could already do by Command R, but now you can do it from the right click and you can delete from the crate, from the library or from the computer with this right click. So again, pretty cool. And if I go into the prepare window, I can right click and of course delete from crate, library and computer there as well. It's more powerful all around. Speaking of analysis, which we did mention, Yes, you can now analyze on import. So I'll go up to the analyze files button, click on the drop down, analyze on import. To be honest, I've never put a track into my Serato library that I didn't want to analyze. So happy about this, you know, just it's just gonna do it automatically now when I put the tracks in, it's gonna analyze them. So a time saver for me, just a small time saver, but these things all add up, so happy about that. And also you'll note, yeah, we had that right click to be able to analyze the file. You can now analyze files whilst you have hardware connected. So if you've got your mixer or controller hooked up to your computer, you can now analyze files. I think back in the day, you know, previously with Scratch Live and then Serato DJ Pro, Serato always wanted to err on the side of caution. Computers weren't really always powerful enough to be able to handle playing two tracks and analyzing at the same time. These days, I think they're comfortable in saying, yeah, look, most computers are gonna have no issue with that. You can just analyze files while you have hardware hooked up. Yeah, that's a great solution, I think. Absolutely wonderful. We can eject external drives from the files panel. That's a cool extra feature, a little, just a little workflow thing. Improvements to search all. So this is pretty cool, right? I'm in this crate right now, and I'm gonna search for Cyrus, all right? And this is the previous behavior, because I'm in the crate, so it's gonna search the crate. But now I can click on, without leaving that crate, I can click on all, and it will now search the whole library. Come out of there, it's back to just searching the crate and I can search beat source as well. That is awesome. That is a really nice feature. I can be deep in my crates and I wanna search for something in the whole library. I don't have to go out to the all crate and search everything there. I can just search within this crate. Yeah, hit all and it will show me results from the whole library and indeed from beat source itself or from my beat source files that are in the library it'll show those anyway just from the all crate actually loving that feature really really nice resizable album art i know lots of people don't care about this but i do use album art on my tracks it's just a nice visual marker for me i enjoy having it there i find it's just a useful visual thing and previously it would always end up looking kind of like this like your library would be all kind of spread out across you know the the actual height of the different fields would just be a little bit too high for my liking now i can just just click there drag that so i can make tiny album art massive album art whatever i want that's just a more flexible way of working and for someone like me who does like that album art there i no longer have to lose lots of rows of information within my crates because i've got the album art turned on i can just make it as small or as large as i like so really like that and then the last thing on the list is that improved files relocate and metadata scanning. I mean, I went through, if we go to the files, we can now relocate lost files, relocate from folder. They've just made that a little bit smoother of a process and rescan file info. So 
it's just a little sleeker a little smoother much of this is about that basically in this new version it's slicker it's smoother but fundamentally i think the key thing is it's that right click menu it just wasn't there before didn't exist in serato now we have the right click and who knows what else they can add to that right click menu in the future but as of today there's a lot of stuff in there that will make people's lives a lot easier so there you go a first look at serato dj pro 4.0.0 I haven't shown you the update for Serato DJ Lite, but that gets most of the new library features with the exception of a couple of things like Crate Search, which probably won't be missed by beginner DJs anyway. One thing I will mention, aside from a few bug fixes, the library stuff is all you're getting in 4.0. No new hardware support, no new performance features. I'm not complaining, there's a lot here to be getting on with, but I thought I should let you know. I do need to say a couple of things before we wrap up. Firstly, I am delighted with this update. It is awesome, but there is still room for improvement. The ability to only access one streaming service at a time is just a bit weird, frankly. No other DJ software platform has that kind of restriction and it needs to go. And other software has the ability to show compatible track suggestions, either based on your own parameters or algorithmic detection, and there's none of that here. Plus, this also seemed to me like an ideal opportunity to introduce some kind of cloud library functionality. And that's also absent thus far. Those are just the first three off the top of my head. Let me know your must-haves in the comments below. But to keep it positive, my guess is that this total rewrite of the library code will enable features like those to come later on down the line, where they would have previously been impossible. So this is a very encouraging first step and everything they've implemented so far works really well. The second thing I need to say is this. I always caution you against using public beta versions for performance, but in this case, as the updates are centered around your precious music library, I would personally not even recommend testing it on your gig laptop at all. I would suggest only diving into the public beta if you have a second computer to test it with. On my M-Series Mac desktop, it's working well. But on my Intel MacBook Pro, the early beta I've been using just completely breaks every time I use it. So 4.0.0 won't be going anywhere near my M-Series gig machine until its full release. I'd recommend you exercise a similar level of caution and whatever you do, back up your data first. I made a video about that recently, which I will link up above. In the comments, let me know your thoughts on this new update. What's your favorite new feature or the one you've been waiting for the most? And are you excited for all the possibilities that 4.0 brings with it? Or is it too little, too late? Sound off down below. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Beat Source Tech. If you liked it, be sure to give us a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And hey, if you haven't already, you can try Beat Source for free and join DJ City for just $10. All the links are down in the description. I'll see you next time.